Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Jakar Zaman. We are going through the 40 hadith of Mullah Ali Qari. And mashallah, Ramadan has almost come to an end. Um, you know, it's a very emotional time as well when Ramadan is about to end. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasts. May Allah accept our acts of worship. Right, hopefully, inshallah, we're going to continue after Ramadan with these hadith so I can complete the 40. So the next hadith, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa an buraydata radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man qara al-Qur'ana yata'akkal bihin nas, jaa yawm al-qiyamati wa wajhuhu azmun laysa alayhi lahmun, rawahu al-Bukhari. Buraydata radiyallahu anhu relates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever recites the Qur'an to gain sustenance from people, shall come on the day of resurrection with a face of bone, having no flesh on it, related by Al-Bayhaqi. So this is another hadith, and this kind of topic, we discussed it before. Many of you guys have questions regarding this. Um, I'll try to answer the questions in the comments, um, and I'll try to clarify as much as possible on this topic of um, taking money for teaching the Qur'an. So first of all, the hadith... Um, mentions about people who use the Quran as a means of getting to supposed to be some a fruit bowl there um, trying to get to the dunya and everyone understands that the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like we said, is a divinely inspired uh, religion, divinely revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sent the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa to give the people understanding of Islam. Now, humans, we know all humans, they have to live in the dunya, right? So, you know, let's say for example, this is dunya. So humans have to live within this. There's no escape from this. You can't escape. So every human being has to eat. And every human being has to drink. And every human being has to uh, breathe. Yeah, and maybe, you know, all the other kind of things that humans kind of do. Marriage and study and so forth. So all these things a human has to do. Now, when it comes to the Quran, like we said, that Muslims should not primarily use the Quran in order for them to be able to accumulate lots of wealth. Yeah, accumulate lots of wealth. So like we said, the difference of opinion amongst the scholars with regards to uh, this was, was mentioned in the previous hadith. But this hadith is more specifically talking about يَتَأَكَّلْ بِهِ nas. It's like eating, you know, without any need. Using, teach, using the Quran, reciting the Quran, not teaching but reciting the hadith mentions to recite the person who recites the quran as we said the teaching one the scholars allowed that right so the teaching was allowed but it was just to recite quran just so that you can make money just like the hadith that we saw uh, uh previously as well regarding the sahabi who saw someone begging and was reciting quran to get money we said that this was wrong because this is using the quran in order for you to accumulate lots of wealth right so this is something the Prophet Sallallahu he didn't like. And as a Muslim, a person should um, be very cautious about his intentions. Now, if a person's intentions obviously are reciting the Quran, are oh Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, recite the Quran so people come close to Allah, to Allah, close to Islam, and then coincidentally people give him funding or money to support his cause. Let's say he's got a madrasa, he's teaching Quran, the Quran, teaching people the Quran. And that would be separate, that would be because the intention is considered to be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once the intention is for Allah and a person was to gain something from the dunya. Now, is there an example of this? So scholars have given an example. Now, it's not coming in this hadith, but I'll tell you the hadith. There was a group of companions. And what happened was this group of companions, they were traveling. And they came to this village. And they asked the village, they said, can we have something to eat? So the village said no, right? So anyway, what happens is um, they're camping outside the village now, right? So they've camped out. And whilst they're camping out, a little girl 
she comes and she says the leader of our our village has been has been uh, poisoned or has been stung by a scorpion or snake can you please help does anyone know how to treat this so one of the companions says i do yeah i can do it so she says fine and um, he says i'm i'm only going to do it if you give us a certain amount of sheep and goats and things like that right so i want something in return basically i want some some money some wealth in return so this sahabi now goes to the village and what he does he in fact he he, he treats the man and the guy gets better so the way he treats him is he recites surah al-fatiha on him alhamdulillah rabbil alameen he recites this so when he recites this what happens is um the guy gets better they as promised they give him you know whatever he demanded and they go back now these group of companions they are confused because they're thinking is this allowed is this not allowed we've heard the prophet sallallahu tell us many times about taking money for reading quran so basically what happened was because he had read quran they were unsure as in is this does this come under the hadith so when they went back to medina they said to the they told the prophet sallallahu look this is what's happened the prophet said it's totally fine in fact give me a share of what you've made and he said okay tell me what did you ha, who told you that surah fatiha which is the what he recited to cure the man he goes, who told you that this is a cure? Who told you? So the Sahaba had learned it from the Prophet Sallallahu in the past. And so now when they used it to cure that man, to help treat that man, and then they re- received in return, well, the Prophet Sallallahu allowed this. So what we learn from this incident is a clarification of this incident. So this incident shows that if a person is going to use it for needs right, that they have, then that would be permissible. But if they're going to be use it to just accumulate lots and lots and lots of Wealth, just like it came in one of the hadith before. I didn't explain that word. Yeah, A person wants to accumulate lots. That is what is looked down upon. But this is fine. So this would be uh, allowed in this case. So that's why things like ruqya, reciting Quran to cure someone, would be permissible based upon this evidence. So I hope the hadith makes sense. Right, just finish off this hadith then. So now the Prophet Sallallahu he said that anyone who does this, right, the, the prohibition as we said, on the day of judgment, the person will come in front of Allah and everyone will know this guy used to read Quran to make money. He used to just read Quran and take money of people. He's going to come and he's going to have, he's going to have a, a, a face of bones, like a skull, right? So just pure bones. And when people see this, they're going to know that this was the guy in the dunya that used to do this. May Allah protect us. Uh, make a, uh, may Allah make our intentions pure for His sake, um, because on the Day of Judgment we don't want to be in that position. Jazakumullah khair. I hope you guys have benefit from this, and um, let me know inshallah in the comments inshallah if you have any sort of questions or anything. I'll try to answer the questions in the comments, um, and if I can't, uh, then um, I'll try to answer them maybe in future videos. So yes, Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakumullah khair for watching this video. I hope to see all of you guys. If you guys are interested, please leave us feedback, get in contact with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair guys for all of your support. Without your support, I wouldn't have been able to produce the videos that I've put up on my YouTube channel. And there is so much more that I really want to do. And without the support of you guys who are patrons, generously supporting this channel i've been able to get myself a camera which as you guys can see the quality of this camera a mic system software i've been able to hire an editor so what do i want to do i want to make lots and lots and lots of more videos for beginners for intermediate advanced in the subjects like arabic and fiqh and hadith and tafsir and aqidah and all those other things as well and for this to happen again this channel needs support so if you guys want to become patrons and support this channel, then check out the link below. Also, if you do become patrons, you'll have access to videos that I don't put up on my normal YouTube channel. So check that out, inshallah. And there's most other perks as well that you guys can uh, benefit from. And if you want to um, access uh, this channel through social media, we've got Twitter, we've got Instagram, Facebook page, and other things as well that you can 
visit. So Jazakumullah khair again guys. Thank you very much for your support. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.